iCarly. All right, welcome back to another episode of The Bouncing Potatoes. I, I am your co-host, Osanda. I am Ethan slash Freddy. And before we get started, I just wanted to say that we do have a third co-host. His name is Christian. He is not going to be... Benjamin. He's not going to be on the show for a couple episodes. Once he's back and ready to go, then he will join us. We miss you, Christian. You know, we hope you get better soon. But, yeah. So that's... I love you, Benjamin. So that's that. Today, I am hosting the episode, so we're going to go off the rails a little bit because I am definitely going to get very spicy. So, first off, though, Ethan, how was your week? Gosh, my week was fantabulous. I will be working half a week next week as I have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off. Why? Vacation days. I'm taking ah. Wednesday's Universal. Thursday is Disney, Friday is getting my car repaired. Routine maintenance. Uh, today I'm going to downtown Disney right after this podcast. Oh, came out Universal this morning. I was at Universal at 8 a.m. sharp, right at opening. Uh, to see Toad, I didn't get to see him. Because he came out of Disney. He said Toad, guys. It sounded like he said Toad. He said Toad. Like the God, Mario. so perverted. What? But, uh. Toe, and I'm not sucking anyone's toes. Also, I don't know what you got a foot fetish. Nah. You got the foot fetish. You're thinking of toes? No, I don't. You just didn't enunciate toad. You said toad. You didn't enunciate. Enunciate. Touche. I <laughs> got him. Um, and uh, work was cool. Nothing too special there. Getting a little hot though. Ninety. Very hot. Very hot in California, at least. Yeah. So, uh, but my week was not too shabby. Not too shabby. My stock, my stock quantum scape went up over ten dollars this week. I got it at seven fifty two. Uh, my grandpa's up a few grand. I suggested to him a few weeks ago. Two weeks is up about five grand. Why did you tell me about it? Three hundred four hundred. I didn't tell you. Oh, no. We should get quantum scape. 10 some bucks and it's it's going to go way up because toyota's using them uh, in 2026 and beyond porsche is good stuff uh it's gone up a few a few bucks in two weeks so yeah better get a jump on the gravy train or something disclaimer this podcast does not offer financial advice so please go ahead and invest in that stock at your own risk we are not financial advisors i wasn't advising anyone you're just mad that i didn't tell you about the stock I am mad that you didn't tell me about the stock. I didn't tell them to invest. I told you. (laughs) I'm going to need you to message me the ticker symbol so I can take a look at it. Oh, yes. I'll message you the ticker symbol and you can tickle your own pickle looking at it. (laughs) (laughs) Was that all for your week? Yeah, it was pretty even week. My girlfriend's here. She's in the back. Sound like I'm kidnapping her, but I'm not kidnapping her. (laughs) (laughs) What the? (laughs) You sound like you totally <laughs> don't <laughs> no, her own book. She's just hanging out in the back. By the way, though, speaking of my girlfriend, then one of these topics is like sponsored by her. She was very passionate about her. What happened to my week? week? Well, I was just I was still on my week. Oh, okay. I'm, my saying, I'm saying how one of our future topics oh, that we're okay. talking about is sponsored. They're kind of like sponsored by her because she was so passionate about it. Um, so stay tuned for that. Well, I should know which one it is. And here's for Osanda's a never a good week. Here it is. Let's see. Yeah, this week. All right. So with my week, uh, I'm going to take Christian's advice and not break it down by day for the most part. Because on Wednesday, we had a client come in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Christian's advice. I skipped Monday and Tuesday. So on Wednesday, we had a client come in. And the thing with my office is that we can only accept people who have had one DUI within three years. So the client came in and he had two uh, different court documents that had two separate case numbers on it. So I asked the client, did you get a second DUI? And he's like, no, I didn't get a second DUI. But he was being a little coy with it, you know? Mm -hmm. He wasn't explaining what the second case was for. So... If they're convicted in Orange County, 
I have a website. It's the court's website where I can look up their case number and see what the case was for. So while I was checking the client in, taking a copy of his ID and the uh, court paper that had that was related to the DUI, I also looked up the case number, the second case number, basically. And when I looked up the second case number, it showed prostitution. Oh, wait, from the dude? See, now that this is this was what, what I thought it was saying that he hired a prostitute and got in trouble and got, you know, charged with that. Because at least in California, I believe prostitution is illegal. Then also, I scrolled down and it turns out the client had tested positive for AIDS. So it was just so this entire time when I'm reading all this, I'm looking at the client and I'm keeping a poker face because I'm not trying to let him know that I'm looking up the case number. But I totally understood why he didn't explain what the second case was for now. So then I let the counselor know and everything, you know, just gave them a heads up. It's because like with the nature of what we're doing, any health conditions, we do need to know what, you know, because different medications. Yeah. But like, is he, like, he's walking? Wait, does that have, like, medicine, like, cures for that? Y- yes, Ethan. AIDS is not as debilitating of a condition as it was back in the 90s because of advanced... I am, uh, I'm shot. Okay, I've been so worried about HIV all my life. Uh... You should still be, you should still, you should still be worried about it. <laughs> you... <laughs> No one told you. No one told you not to be worried about it. But the well, well, I mean, I don't know he won't like kill me. Uh, like, or are you are you like, kidding me? Right? Well, sorry, no he won't like you know live. I can live a daily life. I'm like still worried, but like less worried. I thought I'd like dead in like three seconds. Look at Magic Johnson. You understand that he's lived with it since the nineties, right? Do you know who Magic? Right? Look at Magic Johnson. You understand no, that he's... Magic, no, you cut out. No, I thought Magic Johnson just said... I thought he just said HIV. Yes. I mean, okay, yes. That's different. HIV right. HIV develops in the AIDS. If you, if you take care of HIV right away, it, cannot, it won't develop in the AIDS. But I do and... still... From what I understand, though, you can still live a relatively... Not like not carefree, but like you can live the lifespan expectancy is longer now. That's what I'll go. Oh, did this guy have HIV or AIDS? He had AIDS, per oh, what it said. Still, he's still walking around, huh? Yes, I'm and getting that up. I'm very and, curious now. And getting DUIs, so he's wow. Um, so he's still able to drink and drive and everything. Well, uh, no. Technically, because you got, you're not supposed to drink and drive. All right, the the way you f- say these things sometimes, but <laughs> so anyway, I'm not judging the guy because Wait of. Wait a second, I'm still having a question. So, with AIDS, you're still able to like drive and eat and drink and work. This and- this guy is. I mean, like he he said he told the counselor that he owns a dealership, so so he has a normal lifestyle with AIDS. We can get AIDS and have a normal lifestyle. Well, if you let me continue the story, then you know maybe you'll find no, out. Your story, your story is gonna be because of a DUI or something. But I'm talking about the AIDS. No, I have more to tell about this client. If you did the AIDS and then you, but you're like a, like a, like if you got AIDS or I got AIDS, not gonna we don't. But we don't drink or drive or drink. But I so we can still work and do the podcast and be normal. I think it would be a lot of money to, you know, have the medication and everything. But yeah, I believe so. I don't want to get AIDS, but I mean, I, I, I do, I, you're I, just I, you're so excited about this, and it's very odd. Like it's a little confusing. Uh, it, no, I, I, I just thought. Look, you, you know, you've seen the movie. Oh, we learned about in school. Okay, I just the last time I learned about Asia being AIDS was what in sixth grade or something. Uh, oh, that, that's like multiple like decades ago or decades. Sixth ago. grade. What happened to ninth grade? That's when we learned to help ed too, like sex ed in ninth grade too. Whatever it was in middle school. Uh, ninth grade is high. school. 
Oh, it is. Well, and I own some schools and some middle schools. But all I know is at AC Stowe Middle School, I learned um, <coughs> sex ed. Because also, it's also when we learn about the worms and stuff like tapeworm and all that stuff. Uh, you know, the parasites, the human body and the parasites. What does that have to do with sex ed? Well, we, it was in that same class. So the, 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 we went to the tapeworms and then we learned about, like, health. And then we went, like, this is like world history. And then there's another one. World <laughs> what? Wait, what? 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 What the heck? What the heck was this class? This, what? <laughs> Wait, so the tape forms, I think, it was the science class. No, or health class. It was something. But we didn't, we bro didn't pay that much uh, attention. But, <laughs> but I know in middle school, that's part of there's world history and health, but we learned about AIDS for so long. But that was like years ago. And then, so, and on all the videos they showed us, it just seemed like you're just people, are, if you got it, there's no hope and you're dead in a month or something. So, How I'm about glad, this? I'm glad that's not the case in the world for people with AIDS. Not that we'll, I don't have AIDS. We'll, we'll do the research on this and come back to that part of the story. Um, to, so that we don't mislead the public with that one. Well, I'm just saying what you said. You said this guy walked into your office with AIDS, and he's uh, clearly walking around. Well, yeah, I mean, he had a DUI, and he had to do the program. See, so he's n- not that rich. You said he needed a lot of money, but he's clearly, people who come to your office don't seem to be that rich. And he walked in your office with a DUI and AIDS. Yep. That's pretty incredible to me. <clears throat> wow, this man sounds like Ethan's role model. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're so impressed. You're so impressed, and it's just a little concerning, truly. Especially considering you, you know, kidnapped your girlfriend, and she's. I'm just. Yeah. I'm just surprised. I'm just. I'm just surprised that that the, this guy's able to do all this stuff with AIDS. Like I really thought you dropped dead or something. Okay, I mean, That's crazy. you have all. I, I got mind blown right now. So, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm mind blown that you're able to get drunk and have a DUI with AIDS. I am kind of looking this up to find because a lot of this stuff it's talking about HIV. It's not talking about AIDS. Yes, you know HIV you can live with. I know that. For a long time, because yeah, Magic Johnson, you know, he catch it. Because you know, HIV, you get it, but then it goes dormant, and if you and if you get it when it's when it's dormant period, then it won't get AIDS. But you know, like Easy E with the AIDS. I mean, that was a long time ago. But you know, I, that's the age. So you see, guys, I was shocked. I'm gonna look at how long can you live with how. It looks like so you cannot survive AIDS without treatment. Without treatment, the life expectancy for AIDS patients is about ten is about three years. So, I was wrong about eight, like so. HIV is not as much of a death sentence as it used to be back in the nineties, but AIDS does still seem pretty deadly. However, I will say you that said without treatment, so if you get treatment, you can live longer than three years. <clears throat> yeah, it says. Most patients who receive HAART, which I'm guessing is some type of injection, will survive for a little more than 10 years after the onset of AIDS. Mm. So I will say, cause I'm pretty sure that it showed he got AIDS in 2019, and it's 2023. So that is about, what, three, four years? And then HAART stands for Highly Active Antiretroviral Therapy. I did not expect this conversation to dwell into an investigative <laughs> to I'm research. I'm about this now. Hold on. Oh, that is... Wait. This is making for very exciting podcast <laughs> content right here. <clears throat> so anyway, while Ethan does this research, I'm going to talk about the rest of my week. So that happened, and again, there's no judgment here. 
The only thing is that now, as I get tested every six months, so that's good. Yeah, because you gotta be careful. I feel you like you should test it, Osanda. No. What? Uh oh, you got no. Nah, you gotta get tested. I've only been with one person who has and AIDS. that one person that could have AIDS. You know. That person has on, also only been with one person, which was me. So I'm okay there. Well, you know, you can get HIV by sharing, accidentally sharing blood or something. You know, like what if their sister got a cut and then she touched it and it went to her bloodstream. Or her friend got a cut or she got a cut. Yes, not that is. Sexual transmissions. I know, but the whole blood to blood thing is not as severe as you are thinking it is. It involves two open cuts, one on my skin and one on her skin. Okay, but what if... Hmm. So, no, you're right. I should get tested, and I will get tested. I'm not saying oh, that wait I'm... Wait a never... second. Okay. So how... Really? So, wait, wait. So if someone has bleeding, and it, like, I don't know, that person, let's say they person like, gets blood on their finger... And I don't know, actually, and then like I don't know, puts in the, <laughs> their mouth. <laughs> they can't get HIV from that. I'd have to look that up. I'm not gonna say yes or no. I would need to research what? that. But you just said blood to blood. But I, I, I want to make sure. I don't want to be ignorant and just right, say. Look it, look it up. Look it up. Not right now, man. Can we get all? Look, we can talk about STDs next podcast. I'm curious now. You, you know, you're very curious for someone who. You know, I mean, you froze, you know, you're very curious for someone who, you know, can, can I say it? Are you sure? I don't know. <laughs> you're very curious and concerned for someone who's had multiple um, cooties. There we go. Who's had multiple cooties. You, you're... Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. Ooh, thank goodness. Yeah, so I've had chlamydia twice, but it's just the chlamydia that's one and actually that's that's not uh, that's not severe um i barely even felt it but uh i'm only concerned about hiv but luckily i, I just got i get tested every few months <laughs> you and just said six, you just said six months well six now and now few okay Right. Time ago, the, I just got tested in March. I was clean. Okay. And now I'm only with one person, not several. All right. I was with several. <laughs> anyway. Moving on to. <laughs> <clears throat> man. Just Moving on. Several. It was just a few. Moving on to the rest of my week. So, the, <laughs> on Friday. Also, again, so I kept getting interrupted. I'm going to stop my AIDS research. I'm going to stop this. I don't want to bleed myself out. All right. Yeah, he, Ethan is a bit of a hypochondriac. A bit. So, I'm a lot of bit. So, anyway, again, we're not yes, judging I'm here. Hypochondriac. Yeah, I thought I pronounced it wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. So we're not judging here, but per the program, we do need to know any underlying health conditions because sometimes we do like drug test clients. So in the event like a, of a drug test, then it is a little bit more of a serious thing. And again, it's just better safe than sorry because if that person's taking medication and that medication potentially does make them drowsy in class, then we might think that they're under the influence. But in reality, they're just on medication. But then if we don't know that they have any health conditions, we, we're not going to know why they're on medication. So and something like that could lead to a termination. So that's why we just need to be, as, like, we need the client to be as transparent as possible about stuff like that, because then we don't judge, basically. <clears throat> or make incorrect assumptions. There we go. So on Friday, this guy's lawyer called me, called the office, sorry. So the lawyer called the office, and luckily the lawyer was on the consent form, so we were able to disclose information to them. And they roasted this client. They called him, they called him a perfect idiot. So he, they basically said, 
we don't think that the client's uh, – I don't think that the client's going to make it through the program because he's just so stupid. And I was like, dang. And he was talking about how, like, the client sent him the proof of enrollment into the program. Instead of scanning it, he just took a bad picture of it. And he was basically asking me to send it to him. And, yeah, he just roasted the client, which was kind of funny because I actually – normally I don't care for the lawyers. Like, they're jerks. But in this case, he was so exasperated that I actually did feel for the client. Also on Friday, I drank caffeine for the first time in a couple months. So for those of the, for those who know me, I don't drink coffee because I'm not a big caffeine guy. I actually used to drink coffee when I was younger, when I was like a child, uh, which is kind of weird. But those Starbucks fraps in those glass bottles are absolutely phenomenal. And I really liked them as a kid. And then I think I drank like a mocha drink at 7-Eleven. So those are my like go-to coffee drinks. But nowadays, I don't drink coffee. I just don't like it. <clears throat> I have acid reflux too, and then the coffee makes it worse. So I just, I'm not a big fan of coffee. But I drank coffee on Friday, and I was way too cocky, and I drank it super fast. And this coffee has basically two shots of espresso in it, so I was spracked. So I was even messaging Ethan uh, in all caps, and I was just, my head was spinning. It was not a fun time. So... It was funny though, because my coworkers were kind of treating it like I was like I drank beer or something, because they were like worried for me and they're like, Did, "Were you crying last? Were you crying like this morning or like last night?" Because your your ex, I'm like, no, I just I really just wanted to try the coffee. It wasn't because I was sad or anything like that. I just wanted coffee. It was hot. I wanted a cold drink, but never again. No more coffee for me. That I, I think I told you, but I I was on the toilet at 2 a.m. last night. And I still felt it pumping through my heart, bro. It was nasty. I am not a caffeine guy. No, no thank you. So then, Ethan looks so bored with me talking about my week. This is so that's so mean. <laughs> we stopped the AIDS research, and now he's totally not focused at all on my week. Wow. You know what? Because caffeine, you crazy man. You have such a big reaction. It's so funny. But again, this just proves why I'm never gonna drink. Because I would get way too cocky if I drink it. I'd be like, oh, this isn't, this isn't making me feel anything. And then, like, you're the one who wants a, you're the one who wants a, you're the one who wants a bar fight. Right. But what I'm saying is, like, I would get alcohol poisoning if I actually drank because I would get too cocky and down like five shots, thinking, oh, I don't feel anything. And then, lo and behold, I'm dead. So, I'm yeah. So oh, oh, okay. I'm exaggerating. Says, okay, all right. Anyway, yeah, even yesterday oh, when I... Oh, no, let's continue. Oh, let's continue, oh, Sandra. So, anyway, yesterday no, when I... what are you trying to say? He says the one who was just talking about the whole, oh, I thought if you got AIDS, you would drop dead within, like, a few hours. Hey, haven't you seen the movies? I mean, and, and the documentaries from the 1990s? Okay, we're in the 2020s now. Oh, no one... No, no one told you. No one told you. Where the yeah, instead of all, instead of, <laughs> <laughs> the news talking about all this other crap, they should give us updates on the advancements of medicine of AIDS. They did. You sent me an advancement. You tagged me in it. It was the mRNA thing of the vaccines. Remember? They yeah, cause... but that was something they're working on. I mean, something like they obviously did other things before that. But the news talks about crap. So. They don't tell you about the good things like these advancements in modern medicine. I feel like, yeah, but I I feel like the the news does also talk about advancements in modern medicine a lot. They do, like when a major thing happens, but they otherwise I'll just kind of ignore it. Okay, like, All right. like for example, there's been advancements in laser eye surgery. Oh, I had it. You got it. But you don't hear the news talking about that. It's too positive. Actually, I think the news did talk about LASIK a few months ago because when? the the because one of the government agencies wanted LASIK to be uh to be more transparent about the drawbacks and the negatives of LASIK. Exactly. See, they only said it a little bit negative. They're <laughs> on the negative portions of it all right fair enough so <clears throat> um the cafe oh yeah also
for those who do, don't drink caffeine that often, I can give you anecdotal evidence that it does affect you when you are, uh, uh, when you're tickling your pickle. When you're tickling your pickle, it does definitely change that experience. So it does? Just, yeah, just the FYI. Caffeine doesn't really affect me because I think it's so high energy. I think I'm just so high energy also this okay, all right. You you're not as high energy as you used to be. I just I don't feel I don't feel it. Well guess like, what? Why else do you hang out with me? <clears throat> because you're I I don't hang out with you because you're high energy. Why not? You should. This this man just said he's high energy. This guy also takes two hour naps at work. That's right, because I get like four hours of sleep. Maybe you should start sleeping more. In... Well, I try, but then I can't go to sleep. All right, anyway. So then moving on to the rest of my week. Or I'm watching so, a TV that I have to finish. That you have to finish, okay. Yeah, I got to finish iCarly and, and stuff. <sighs> so today, took my dog to get his la- eighth and final arthritis shot. So that was cool. But then on our way back, or not on our way back, but after we came back home, I took him out, and in the backyard there was a dead bird, a tiny little, a tiny little bird. So, unfortunately, it looks like the heat got to the little bird. So then I had to, I had to throw him away. Um, Dude, you picked up a dead bird with gloves. With gloves, it was so it was so it's tiny. Not it's not bad luck. It, it wasn't a crow. It's still a dead bird. Well, it the heat, he man. It to you? No, thankfully. Oh my god. <laughs> he sniffed around that area. Coda sniffed around that area, but he did not he, he did not grab it with his teeth because I think he would have ate it. So <sighs> man. Thankfully, thankfully that didn't happen. But yeah, I felt bad for the bird, honestly. Uh so that was my week. So we're gonna move on. Now that so wow, until Chris, wasn't too bad. Yeah, because you interrupted me a bunch and you know you got distracted by the AIDS research. <clears throat> that so was scientific research right there. So until Christian comes back, we are actually going to delay our deep questions segment because I feel like that would be question. Why do you like to tickle your pickle? Why do I like to do it? Yeah, so many times in a day. I don't do it so many times in a day. I do it once a day. Sometimes two or three times. See, yeah, I knew it. <laughs> Why do I like to poop so many times in a day? That's my deep question. That, I gotta get my gut bacteria checked, maybe. What? I gotta get my what gut bacteria. Uh, what's huh? to say? It's not about me not enunciating. This is what I heard. I gotta get my duck get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Out of respect for Christian, we're gonna hold off on the deep question segment until he comes back. All right. So we are instead going to do an investigative, a pseudo investigative journalism segment. So going back from Ethan's ta- uh, Ethan's question last week when he mm-hmm. talked about why do billionaires not donate to get public parks funded and everything like that and i suggested that he start a non-profit so ethan's lovely girlfriend listen listen to the podcast and she actually wanted us to talk about this as ethan was saying earlier and there is a specific book that she uh mentioned that we should bring up and the name of that book is so the author is Dean Spade, and the title of the book is I'm Mutual Aid. Well, okay, but, you know, some people listen to us only on Spotify and cannot <laughs> see oh, the video. Wait a second. That makes sense. Hey, you guys should, should, should check us out. Hey, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We got If there's a surprise at <laughs> 500 subscribers uh, and you can read this book, we might be giving it away if you uh, subscribe to us. It's not even your book. You're going to give the book away. You don't even have the book. Well, I just buy another one and give it away. All right. So mutual aid, building solidarity during this crisis, parentheses, and the next, end parentheses. And again, this is by Dean Spade. 
So, Ethan, go ahead and summarize the, or just talk about what Elizabeth highlighted for you to mention. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see. Okay, so. This is all about mutual aid. <laughs> and there's some historical context here. Christian moral hierarchy. So, it's all about your moral hierarchy. Okay. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna stop you. I'm gonna stop you right now. I'm gonna stop you. Your disappointment is very apparent. It's making me nervous. I'm gonna stop you right there. It's all about your moral ethical values, okay? You have to um, donate to the public parks um, because it's a good moral behavior. Growth and factor. Direct. <laughs> direct. Don't look at me like that, Osana. Don't look at me. <laughs> direct responses to efforts in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, see, in the 60s and 70s, the billionaires were just kept growing and. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> what are you talking about? People, and this is very bad. The Black Panthers. Ooh. Okay, so the Black Panthers, I know this one. They were a group of black people. <clears throat> Uh, who are fighting for justice in the 60s and 70s as well um, against the billionaires specifically who wouldn't fund the parks. Let's see, upholding... What? Uh, upholding something <laughs> of power. Oh, systems of power. Oh, I have a quote to read to you guys on page 23. Here it is. Charity makes rich people and corporations look generous while upholding and legitimizing the systems that concentrate wealth. I 100% agree with this statement. Uh, all right, next up. Uh, <laughs> stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Charity benefits the rich. They do because you can, you're run by the wealthy and you don't give to the homeless people who are usually minorities and does not challenge the systems at all and it manages the rent of power and eligibility requirements to provide wealth. Is that what that says? And tax shelters. Yeah, that means they don't have to pay zero bucks in taxes when they provide to a charity. And that is what's going on with mutual aid. All right. So I apologize to everyone, actually, to everyone who's actually read this book. Full disclaimer, I have not read this book fully yet either. All right. I, I am currently on page... 17 or 18 of the ebook that was sent to me. I did ask Chat GPT to summarize the book for me because I was I wasn't really planning on I was planning on reading the book, but I just kept getting to, oh by the way, I totally forgot to talk about something that important that happened. So last night I so I've been trying to find this my little pony song for the longest time. Okay, because I when I would work at Chuck E. Cheese, I and I was closing and everything. One of the songs that was playing was this My Little Pony song. And it was actually pretty freaking fire. All right. So I've been trying to find it. I went through my Snapchat memories last night to find it for an hour and I couldn't. And then I asked Chad GPT for its help. And lo and behold, I was able to find the song. So the song is, uh, I think, We Are Not Flawless. And it's an actual absolute banger. All right. I know it's a My Little Pony song, but it's actually super fire. Anyway. My Little Pony? No, I don't. It was just the song that was playing at Chuck E. Cheese. So it kept... It's a little rony, and I just said, da, da, da. Is that the theme song? No, uh, it, it is My Little Pony, but Pepperoni, I don't think, is part of it. But anyway, so going back to this book, first off, mutual aid, okay, mm -hmm. is when people kind of work together to accomplish something, okay? So Ethan didn't even really describe what mutual aid was. Or is when people work together to accomplish something mutual aid. So an example of mutual aid would be the Black Panthers, uh, who they worked together to actually. So what happened was back in the sixties or whatnot, they were going to give free breakfast to other Black people, and mm. long story short, the government the government didn't want that. So they sent the police to urinate all over the food so that they were not able to give it out. So mutual aid is when people get together. It's more of like a grassroots movement and they do good for their society. 
instead of relying on the government to do it for them. So, it is a really good book. I feel like we're not going to do it justice, considering how this man has not read a single page of it. You only read 17 pages. I only read 17 pages, but I also did ask ChatGPT to give me a summary of the book, and I read that summary, and then I asked it. Summary. Okay, I'll read it right now. Do it. Uh, Let's actually have to summarize the summary. I'm not going to. I'll just uh, show the screen. Oh, fuck. All right. So, as you guys can see, this is ChatGPT. I need you to summarize a book for me. All right. Book written by Dean Spade. It explores the concept of mutual aid and its potential to transform communities and challenge systemic inequalities. The book emphasizes the importance of moving away from traditional charity models and instead fostering solidarity and collective action. So I'm not going to read all of this because I'm sure it's going to bore. But so what is wrong with the with current nonprofits, according to Spade? So number one, power imbalances. Spade argues that nonprofits often perpetuate power imbalances between those who have resources and those who are in need. They create a dynamic where a few individuals or organizations control the distribution of aid, reinforcing high hierarchical structures and disempowering marginalized communities. Charity versus systemic change, professionalism and bureaucracy, reinforcement of hierarchies, lack of accountability. All right. So that is basically that. Now we're going to go back here. Okay. So again, uh, I'm going to put the, the link to the book in the description because it is a really good read. Like I said, I wasn't planning on reading the whole thing, but once I did start reading it, it's actually really, really interesting. Especially Especially for someone like me who is, I've been wanting to try to find out a way that I could volunteer or like donate money to homelessness, to foster shelters and everything like that. But now I'm kind of going to read the book and kind of see if I can maybe start my own mutual aid thing. So see, that's, that you. yeah, so that's the book. So kind of going off this topic, I actually wanted to talk about one of our current events which is the SAG strikes. So this is a topic that Ethan knows way more about, hopefully, because I am relying on him for this one. So go ahead, Ethan. Break down what they're striking about and everything like that. Um, okay. So this is what happens. Um, the writers went on strike because they're not getting paid enough. Uh... Yeah, and they have uh, harsh working conditions, etc. So they went on strike. Now, but there's three main unions in the um, the film industry. There's the actors, the SAG, then there's the Writers Guild, which is writers and directors. Okay, so first, the writers were all by themselves. You know, there's, you know, they're all by themselves. You know, hard to get a deal because, you know, the Hollywood won't shut down just the writers. It, it comes, it comes to a slow halt, but it doesn't shut down. The writers uh, were complaining they weren't getting paid enough, but also they're concerned that a uh, studios wanted to use AI writers instead of them, uh, and they wanted to in their new contract make sure that they can't be replaced with AI writers, which makes perfect sense. Because AI writers won't make anywhere near as good as TV shows, Osanda, as regular people who write stuff. I agree. Chat GPT, right? New episode of The Simpsons. Okay. So that was their main thing. They're still fighting over that. And it's been, uh, that was in May. So it's been at least two months now. Then the Directors Guild, they actually came to a conclusion. They settled with a deal. Uh, there's uh, makes sense. There's far fewer directors, and there's just like just one person who's the director. But there's no multiple writers. They have like writers' rooms, right? For these things, there's a lot more people. The director is much smaller, so it makes sense. It was easier for them to come to a deal with what they were doing. And it's again, it's hard for AI to direct something um, to be there. Um, so they came to deal with the brother Zag. The actors, the actors, led by Fran Drescher, the nanny named Fran. She's the president of SAG. So fine in the name. 
<laughs> she uh, mm. sent, uh, I don't know if you saw it or saw it, but she did a fiery speech the other day. Wow, she was, she was pretty mm. good. She lit a fire in me, in the nanny. Whoo. Oh, gosh. But she left a fiery speech about how they, uh, you know, we can't be, because the studios, they wanted to, uh, you know, not, not for the big names like, you know, Margot Robbie or Robert Pattinson. But like if you're uh, like Osanda, if you're an extra or something, like, or just a little working actor, which, you know, working actor is just, you know, not a big name, but they appear in a lot of stuff. 99% of the SAG is the working actor, by the way. And they make, I think, what? Mm, like thirty or $60,000 a year, something like that. Which is not much in California. Yeah, but they don't, and also, you know, they don't work all the time. You have to, like, book projects. You know, it's not a constant thing. But the studios wanted to be able to use their face, like, once. Or use their face, or not, like, a project. Pay them one time. I think it was, like, 50 then, bucks. Yeah, well, for the extras, yeah. They use their face, then be able to use their face for, the, like, eternity. And just plop. So they would never, basically wouldn't need any extras after a couple months. Cause they'd Utilizing have... AI to do that, right? Yeah, using AI to scan their face and just plop them in projects. So they just get rid of extras, basically. Which would suck because, you know, some people get their start off extras. They start extras and they, you know, they talk to people and you get hired and, as an actual actor, you know. So that. And you become a star. Them. Yeah, yeah. So that sucks, but also, uh, just the, you know, the actors themselves, they uh, they you know have long long hours, still not getting paid enough, and residuals. Residuals are the big key. So this is what happened before streaming, or when everything most of it was on cable, like the nanny, like Fran, Dresher. Can you explain what residuals are, please? I am. I are you not letting me finish? Goodness, what an interrupter. You did this to me the whole time. Yes, but when when I do it, when I do it, it's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Fran Drescher was in the nanny. Okay, so back in the day, before streaming, when a show became about, when it was at least six seasons, then it got residuals. Um, uh, they got like, uh, yeah, residuals. So that means when it's on like reruns, like the nanny was on Nick at Night for a long time. Every single time that played, a check would go to every single actor in the nanny. Every single one, the kid, the the stars. They had varying amounts by you know, how much you're in it. But even if you're just an extra on the nanny, you would still get a check. Mm-hmm. And for years, like she and the Fran Dresser are still getting uh, residuals right now. For the nanny, even though it ended decades ago, and all those people on there, you know, Niall, the blonde girl, any random person, even if he showed up for one episode, if that as long as that episode keeps on playing, it's almost like royalties. Basically, what basically what royalties are for music, you know, when your song keeps getting played over and you get uh, on the radio and get a little royalty check. Same thing. So the studios want to end that; they don't want residuals anymore. But that's how. You know, because I, like I said, actors don't work all the time, right? To book a TV show, so they would rely on the residual checks to keep them going in between those big projects they have. So if they get rid of those, then you run out of money, obviously, right? So those are very important. But with the streaming, and that's when Netflix came in. And Netflix, since I was not a studio, that was a streaming service. We went to Netflix. What they did, and they still do, is they pay you all up front. So if you have a show only on Netflix, you get a big check in front, and then that's it. You'll never get paid ever again, you know, which is very different from a cable TV show. So they the actors want their residuals, which makes sense because that's how they live. The studios say no residuals, and now they're striking. Now, the studios, <laughs> woo woo, they're gruesome. They said, they said, they said, they want to keep this strike going until the actors are forced out of their homes and apartments. Like they can't, they, they, they want them to be evicted 
they, they, they're willing to keep it going until the actors have no more money to live in their apartments. That's horrible. So what the actors should do is they should actually start a mutual aid to help out their fellow actors they in this. actually should. See, ooh, this ties in nicely. But what, uh, what really disturbing is what Bob Iger said. Oh boy, because he's the only one, the guy that actually said something directly. Bob Iger went on Thursday, and he said... Explain who Bob Iger is, please. Oh, come on. Everyone knows who Bob Iger is. No, they don't. You're wearing a you Disneyland know. shirt. You obviously do, but that doesn't mean that the rest of the people... He's the know. CEO of Disney. Even my grandpa knows who Bob Iger is. Your <laughs> grandpa's... Man, get out of here, all right? He what? just recently became the CEO of Disney again, too, so... Okay, he's the CEO since 2005. Okay, Bob Iger is the CEO of Disney. Took a short break, but he's back. There you go. Okay, now, and he said that uh, basically said the actors, the actors requests are uh, what do you say? They're they're uh, impossible and they're like uh, absurd and they're just like they, I mean, it's called them really disgusting things. I'm a, I'm gonna look up the actual yeah. quote. Yes, please do. But he said, he said, they, they said the requests are impossible and that uh, that it was, it was just, it was not happening. And he said, and he said it was, uh, uh, let me see this, Bob Iger statement, actors. Bob Iger comments, there you go. Yeah, see, it's trending, trending. <laughs> Iger said that while he respects the right of the unions to get as much as they possibly can in compensation for their people, they must be realistic about the business environment and what this business can deliver. Iger continued, it will have a very, very damaging effect on the whole business. And unfortunately, there's huge collateral damage in the industry to people who are supportive, who are supportive services. And I could go on and on. It will affect the economy of different regions even because of the sheer size of the business. It's a shame. It's, it is really a shame. He also, I believe, said that it was like unrealistic. Um... If you guys check out uh, Adam from Adam Ruins Everything, and I think he has it, he has his own Netflix show. I don't know the name of the Netflix show, but he actually posted a story or reel recently about Iger's comments, and that's actually what like led us to talking about, at least led me to wanting to talk about this on the podcast. So definitely check out Adam. Again, I'll leave that in the description so that everyone can check that out. Um, let me see if I can play that right now. So if you've ever wondered why you should tilt the... Let me see if I can play that for myself right now. Adam. Point is, you just, you just, you, no, no, no. These people are crazy. So basically, uh, yeah, they're uh, striking so they can get fair rights and residuals from streaming, as well as, uh, what you call it, uh, not uh, yeah, prevent AI usage. No. It was revealed that the writer for the, the She-Hulk episode where Dare, Daredevil appeared, which is like one of the best episodes of a pretty horrible show, um, that person, a writer, the person who wrote the thing, wrote, got paid a total of $396 for that episode. That's it. $396. Is that... In co- like in context though, is that not the normal amount that writers get paid? Or no, no, no. Let me let me tell you something. Though. In talk in context. I watched this reviewer, and she actually was uh, uh, just an extra, and yeah, a little cameo on Zombieland Two. At the very end, probably for like, I think she said two lines. She said, "To this day, she still gets residual checks of thousands of dollars for those two lines." She's in probably the movie for like five seconds. And this man, who wrote, wrote a whole episode of a Disney Plus show, got paid less than four hundred bucks for the episode. That's insane. That again just gets into the whole. That gets into the whole capitalism thing, though, doesn't it? Now, you know, and it also gets into another argument about low-skilled workers, doesn't it? Now, huh? Yeah. Calling that back. Is, to- but but both of those things are. That those are acting is a high skill job, writing is a high skill job. I'm talking about I'm talking about the writers. High skill job. What? I'm talking about the writers because you know I'm sure the that writing is a high skill job. 
I'm sure that these corporations are going to argue that it's not a high skilled job because they're only doing, you know, they're writing something that can easily be replaced by AI. But it can't because if the show's bad, people won't watch it. If it has bad writing, people will not watch it. I'm just saying, it's funny how now you're on the writer's side and everything, but before, with the low-skilled workers, you were not on the low-skilled workers. Are, but writers aren't low-skilled workers. It you, know seems how like... write, you know how hard it is to write a good TV show? Take about take the Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon versus uh, you know, She-Hulk. You know, one has excellent writing, and one has terrible writing. It's not that easy. I can't go and write a TV show. I can't. Uh, what? No, no way. No way. I mean, I have, an episode of, I have an episode of my uh, little animated series, and I tell you, that's probably not written well. Doesn't wasn't she well widely right? like panned by critics though? What? Wasn't didn't She Hulk get like really bad reviews by critics? Yes, it was terribly written. So you want the writer who is only who got that money? Because you and you just said it was terribly written, but you want them to get more money. Well, I mean, okay, you still it's terribly written, but the show it's twenty minutes, so it's at least what that episode is like thirty minutes, so thirty pages of dialogue and scenes and all that, and like, usually they write more than one. So it was like a showrunner and a head writer, and you know, you should get you should get four hundred bucks for it, it's, even though it may not be the greatest thing. You it. It's it's a lot of work to write because you know you have to. It's, they don't start no. They don't write one cop or draft. We drafts and drafts and drafts the show, and then if they're just not good at writing, they're not right. They're not good at writing, but they still put in a lot of work to do it. It's over like twenty times. That's like four hundred pages of stuff that just typed up. So you think that just because they put in a lot of work to do it, they should get paid a lot of money? Yes, they put in hard work. <laughs> Oh, okay, they put in hard work. All right, so then. Oh God, what is your little angle here? I'll just say, you know, they put in a lot of hard work. All right, so they that even did. when, even when low skilled workers, quote unquote, are putting in a lot of hard. Alexander, you can't put in hard work pushing a cart and a girl. Are you yeah, saying so you're not saying a lot of hard work there? I don't know. You're saying that if doing you, that. If you, if you if you make it hard. If you make it hard for yourself by purposely making it hard or being dumb, then fine. So but you're telling me that those people, thing, those people, people can't write movies, okay? Those people can't write three out 180 page scripts. And that's what these studios are betting. These studios are betting that those people can be using AI. AI can't do it either. <laughs> Mm. So for those of you guys listening, because I'm a high skill job, okay. Because I'm coming off as a complete jerk. I'm just playing devil's advocate, which is just something that I love doing. I yeah, actually just likes how, uh, likes low skilled. It doesn't believe low skill work does exist. For some I don't believe low skill work exists. I believe that that's just a sham. Do. That's the sham played by corporations he to not thinks, pay. He thinks that. Pushing a cart in uh, Albertson's parking lot is very high skill, and maybe it's hard for him, so maybe that's why. I don't think it's a high skill, but I just, you know, I just don't think that so I. You think it's, but you think it's a low skill? No, I don't think it's a low skill. I, I just think you the think term. It's a, low... a no skill it takes no skill. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still... going, also, going back to Iger's comments, and this is actually the part that really upset people. He said, It's very disturbing to me. We've talked about disruptive forces on this business and all the challenges we're facing. The recovery from COVID, which is ongoing, it's not completely back. This is the worst time in the world to add to that disruption. I understand any labor organization's desire to work on behalf of its members to get the most compensation and be compensated fairly based on the value that they deliver. So it just it's just very tone deaf. He's talking about how like it's super disruptive. And meanwhile, I believe he's going on his private jet to like his getaways and everything like that. And he Iger recently laid off a lot of uh, ESPN staff. For those of you guys who don't know, ESPN is owned by Disney. Like Jeff so, Van Gundy. Jeff Van Gundy, who was part of the trio who were calling the NBA Finals the past couple of years. They even laid off Jalen Rose, who is who is actually a very notable uh, internet personality, really, for them. So he's, he's talking about all this, and it's just very tone deaf. Like, he's saying, oh, it's so disruptive. Like, they're really hurting the industry. Man, shut up, bro. <laughs> You should start distributing your salary to these people so that they can, yeah, 
So, and that just... All of them, sure. And that just goes back to the whole mutual aid, like, not... It doesn't fully go back to the mutual aid thing. Like, I want to clarify that. It but it, in. it does tie in. It does tie in, for sure. And also, one thing we kind of failed to mention with the whole nonprofits and everything like that is that the argument that Dean Spade was making is that nonprofits basically favor the rich because the rich decide who the money in the nonprofit that gets donated to the nonprofit gets distributed to. So even if it's like someone who's going through homelessness, if they're not sober, then some people, some of the elite think that that person shouldn't get money to get out of homelessness because they're not sober. Right. So that's obviously the main reason that they're homeless. It's because they have issues. They're not sober. That's not, that's not it at all. Right. It could be a factor. It could definitely be a factor. I'm not going to say it's not a factor, but there's plenty of alcoholics who still have their home. All right. So, you know, so that's, that's the whole thing with nonprofits, how it like does, because it, it favors the rich again, like Ethan was saying too, it's a tax. It's just all about taxes at the end of the day, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so that's, um, I just wanted to get that in there. Cause like I said, I don't feel like we did that discussion justice necessarily. Um, but it was a really, it, it's a really good book so far. Um, but that, that's a strike. So obviously, you know, Ethan, Ethan knew a lot about that. I, I didn't really know that much about it to be honest. Um, but that's interesting though. Down in I watched the Secret Invasion uh, show. The credits are made by AI, and they look terrible. <laughs> so AI is cool. Off a whole bunch of artists. Like, another, another this point, it's like they, the other artists have drawn the other Marvel shows credits and Star Wars credits, and then these look horrible, and they're made by AI. So, fuck it. And I believe that Disney also recently laid off someone uh someone who saved toy story 2 or something like that because she had uh she had a record of it at home when like the original file got deleted or something yeah, like that was part of their seven thousand layoff yeah numbers. so like these corporations are not loyal they do not care about you you know unless you're like in the upper echelons of management he got, he got laid off from microsoft you know, like, yeah he said stepbrother a Zoom call at ten thirty in the morning. He woke up, thought he was going to work today, that day, and he said, "Up, oh, boss, it's meeting time." And then they uh, got all of me, rounded them all up like sheep, and said, "All right, you're fired." <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, that's cool." Don't feel too bad for Jordan though, guys, because he's been on a vacation for the past like a month or so. Um, <laughs> But still, yeah, there's nothing to come back to. That's why that was a vacation. That would be pretty sad to come back to an empty house with no job and barely any friends. Well, actually, he has a lot of friends. Wow, I really hope Jordan doesn't listen to her podcast. <laughs> it's gonna get depressed. What's wrong? What the heck? What the heck? <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, you know, I mean, you don't think it's going to his mind. I mean, like, he got out there really fast. He's probably like, I gotta get out of here. This place is depressing. You think so you you think he went on vacation to avoid that? I don't think that it. I, think so. I, I don't think, think it's so. that. Every time, every time everyone asks him, so what are you gonna do now? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Then all of a sudden he's on vacation. Oh, so you think this was an escape? Do you think Jordan needs an intervention? I think he is. He's escaping from the obvious. I mean, come on. What if you just woke up? Me and you. Let's say we woke up. Woke up. And went to our jobs, or a big one like Microsoft. And you just went, thought you're going to work. Let's say you're a place. You thought you're going to work, bosses. Let's have a meeting. Gets a group feeling. All right, you guys are laid off. And he'd be like, "What?" You know, he'd be shocked, like with no warning. I he'd be probably a little upset, a little angry, a little sad. Well, yeah. I mean, I have been laid off. Like, Here we go, but like without warning. Yes. See. And he felt a little sad. A little I was. De- I went into a depression. A and depressive state. Has the uh, since because Microsoft obviously had a lot of built up savings, so he said, "Let's take it. And let's uh, go on a, on a world tour." Yes, yeah, so act like it, but I bet that was a factor. I, I mean, yeah. To, we also want to see the places, but 
like that's probably why he, where he, he chose the place he wants to see. But I mean, he left awfully quick, didn't he? I mean, remember, remember how he, remember how we thought it, he was just going to visit his dad in Cleveland, and all of a sudden he just messages, "Oh, guys, so yeah, I'm going here, 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 and then Japan." I'm like, we're like, what? <laughs> yeah, he didn't tell it. I mean, a week before that, he had no idea where he's going in those places. He was thinking about it. But I mean, start flying places. I'm telling you, I think that's what it was. Oops, my bad. Sorry, I was trying to show Coda there, but then my, it failed. Uh, I mean, okay, I understand where you're coming from, but at the end of the day, Jordan also does have enough savings, and he has his own apartment. He's not. It's not a home. It's a, an apartment. It's not going to be that lonely. It's not going to be more lonely than it was before because. He has been living alone anyway. So, and yes, he's. But you're living alone but with uh, nothing to do. Yes, but I mean, I'm sure he'll be able to get a job decently quick. All right. Yeah, I like that. And that's why he's taking this vacation. I bet you he's thinking about it almost every day. Like, I don't I don't think so. I really I don't. So why is your ass waiting on He's not going to tell you the truth. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, bro, you saw how well descriptive he is when it comes to the places <laughs> he's visiting. <laughs> so, very cool. <laughs> that was actually very funny. He's like, very cool. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll ask him, you know, but I, I, I think he's in a better spot. Because I did ask him, like, before he left on the vacation, I was like, hey, bro, like, checking in on your mental health. Are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, he says that, but remember, I'm sure he said that about his girlfriend too, or ex-girlfriend. Then he sent us, you know, and that was uh, what, uh, a year or so ago, or whatever, whenever they, I don't know when they broke up, but a long time ago. Then, remember, we were talking about Christian, and he was talking about his relationships, and then Jordan sent us a seven-paragraph thing about how they're the worst thing ever. So, I think he just hides things. <laughs> He says he's okay, he may act like it, but deep down there, uh, there's something. All right, well, well, we'll check on him after this, then. We'll check on him after this. Because oh, one thing about Ethan and I, we're not going to hide what we're going through. We're definitely going to be maybe overshare it, if anything. Um, so, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm a little, I'm, now you got me worried for Jordan. I was worried for Christian, now I'm worried for Jordan. Oh. Hey. Yeah, but see, uh, think about it, right? Come on, who goes on a seven-paragraph rant about how relationships are so terrible unless you're still upset about your ex-girlfriend or your breakup from your ex-girlfriend, which makes total sense. It's not bad. He's not. He's not upset. He. I don't think he's upset. He broke up with her. He's not upset about it. He broke up with her? Yeah. Well, how come when I, because uh, I'm still her friend, so... Uh, uh, she was hey, 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 yo, you're still friends with your stepbrother's girl? Friend, ex-girlfriend? Right. I asked him about it. He's like, you yeah, know, whatever. She lives right in Timmy Valley. So, I mean, and she has a universal past. She has a new boyfriend. And, uh, oh. Cool. Oh. Um, but, I mean, if you ask her some of the things, he, it seemed like she was ready for it. Too so uh, I don't know who broke up with who, but I guess but she wasn't. I guess I guess sad about what you're saying. I don't know. All right, you know, I'm I'm a little worried for Joy. Oh, great, I gotta be worried about these two twins. Jeez, please, I got my own stuff going on. All right, I'm worried about these two twins, and and the they garbage at responding. All right. <laughs> well, to be fair, Jordan's a different time zone. Even before that. I mean, that is true. I'm just trying to give him the benefit of doubt right now. <laughs> when he comes yeah. back, we'll still we'll do the same thing. But at least though, he's here, he's like nine hours ahead. It's funny. I think he actually responds more on the trip than he does at home. <laughs> 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 and then, you know, Christian, man, so... <laughs> Golly, golly, this is tough. That's tough. Also, I still, th- I still think, I, I think that's weird. Though. Uh, you know, everyone has their phones, and you know. Yeah. Well, you don't talk to you don't talk to my ex. So why are you talking to Chris uh, Jordan's ex? Well, I wish Tom make a happy birthday. Oh, okay. All right. 
And why did I talk to Jordan's ex? Because, uh, not a good friend. Wait, always, all of us, all of us are always FaceTiming me, Jordan, and her. Oh, oh, and then, okay. and then all, and then we have a group chat, me, Christian, her, and Jordan. Wow, I wasn't invited. The heck? I don't know where you were. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's when you were too busy messaging your girlfriend and would, uh, wouldn't give us the time of day. And, uh, that's not true. That's uh, not true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Sandra <laughs> wouldn't end the one. Because we'd get on, uh, that chat would be full of, we'd all like FaceTime a lot. There's no <laughs> way you'd be FaceTime. Because I would be talking to my my that's ex. That's what I just said. That's why I said you said why were you invited? That's that's why. You, no, but you guys never you no 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 y'all never invite me. Y'all never invite me. You should have still invited me. Well to be fair, I didn't create it. So you also asked one of the twins. Alright, alright. I don't know who created it. I was just there. By the way, did my ex respond when you said happy birthday? Yeah, she said thank you with a nice little smiley face. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. make, make you jealous, make you mad. Don't worry, I'm trying to steal your girl, man. I oh, hey, wait. Do you want me to do some investigative work? Do you want me to try to find out? If, you know that other dude really is your boyfriend. I can do that for you. I can all play all nice and be like, hey, how's it going? How's life been? Da 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 da. And to be totally unsuspecting. And if you want to know, so I got. I'm it. I'm good. You don't have to do that. That's fine. Well, I'm kind of curious. Oh wow! Wow, we what do still have more. We do still have more current events to talk about. By the way, well, how much time has elapsed? Oh, that's true. I mean, we've been about an hour in, so I guess we don't really have to get into it. I mean, there's nothing. Wow, there's nothing. Oh, actually, there is one thing I did want to talk about. Uh, so Lolo Lolo Jones, who what is. is who is an Olympian, Lolo Jones. She, is that a transgender? I don't think so. Oh, I thought that was what the story was about. Okay. She's a track star. So she's a champion hurdler and a bobsledder, okay? And she is 40 right now. And she oh, is a, a virgin. And she said that being a virgin killed her dating life. So... I guess, I mean, I guess we don't really have to talk about this, uh, but we'll, we'll wait. Maybe we'll wait for this topic until Christian comes back. But I just found that to be super interesting. Why do you think he have all the topics? You know, why do you think he's the one? one? Oh, why? Because he's a virgin? Allegedly. We don't know for <laughs> sure. Oh, I know. I know. Whoa. Hey, yo. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey yo! Yeah, well, that's, that's what he says. He's, he he okay, he does doesn't like hooking up, so he prefers stop. having. A stop putting his stop putting his stuff out there, bro. Like, well, that's what he'll tell you that he tells everybody that he told oh, okay. he even remember he said that one. Uh, he almost said that on the podcast. It's um similar. Okay, all right. Well, there's nothing wrong with it, but I just find it interesting, like, because. Yeah. She she actually so she said uh, a couple years ago uh, when she was doing something with Kevin Hart because Kevin Hart he like takes uh, cold plunges with uh, celebrities and popular people. I know that. She said that she regrets it. So it's like, well, if you regret it, why not just lose it? Why wait until marriage? Yeah, uh, so why should go over there and uh, take it from her? <laughs> It's, no, it's just, and then she also said that she thinks it's a disadvantage, a competitive disadvantage to her, to being a virgin. So it's like, okay, if you, f and if you feel that way, like you feel like it's ruined your dating life and all this, why don't you just lose it? Like, because I guess what she's saying is that like most guys, so for the record, all right, on the count of three, let's say I'm how- not a virgin. Let's on the count of three. Let's say how old we were. Are you a virgin? No. So let's say how old we were when we lost it. One. Seventeen. Twenty-five. See, so there you go. I beat you by eighteen years. 
Okay. So, you're okay. 25. How old are you? 26. Hey, what? I wanted to give you a cake. Remember? Dang it, you didn't tell me. Yeah, I did. And you were too mad because you thought I was lying to you. Remember? Oh, you know, yeah, because this man plays a lot. No, I don't. No. You never say no when he's saying the real truth. That's 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 such cap. I I'm very honest and transparent. Uh huh. He just plays a lot. Never know. know You wanted to watch you. So anyway, so anyway, my point is maybe he lost his virginia at like twelve, but maybe he's just joshing. Anyway, my point is like I just don't understand the. I don't understand the point of it if you regret it so much. Because she's saying that like guys will date her and then she will tell them that she's not she's not down until mar- until marriage and then they're not interested in dating her anymore. Oh son, and, you left out a key detail again. Goodness, what? let me question you over this because to say key detail, key, and Jordan too, he's like key detail, key detail. What's the key she detail? She wants to have sex during marriage. You can't just not Dude, you can't just break that. That's a big thing for people, Osan. I said that. No, you didn't. You just said she's a virgin and that it's a disadvantage. And you're like, why not just break it? Or why not just do it? Right, but she regrets it. If she regrets waiting. But, no, but, okay, she may regret waiting, but she still has the belief that she wants to mm. marry. So she's just going to hold firm with that belief. Okay. Yeah, like, that's like a really, that's religion. That's a big, that's a big thing for people. You can't just, ah, I you know, I'm just going to lose just because I regret it. All right. So, because. You have a bigger problem when she's like, damn it, I want to wait till marriage and I broke Oh, uh, all right. So it's a, pers- okay, I get it now. I get it. All right. I, I mean, I understand, but I also, personally, I just think that, like, sex is an important part of a relationship, so I just don't think that waiting until marriage is a smart thing, because if you're not compatible that's sexually... Fun, though, but that's religions. That's some religions. Are you talking about you dogging on people's religions or something? Is it, is, it reli- is it a religious reason that she's doing it for? It is. That's, a, if you're, for some, if you're, like, for example... A lot of like real like super 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 christian people no i understand but is her reason a religious reason she didn't mention that Alexander, it's your article why don't you read up on it <laughs> she, the article didn't mention religion okay i guess yeah. she is a, usually, okay let me tell you something usually sex to marriage when they when people think that it's like 99 percent all right ethan's right it is a religious reason there am i now i understand why <laughs> Not, <no>. wow <laughs> And once again, he left out the key detail way at the beginning. So that's that's my bad. That's my bad. That's why it's better that we have, you know, different perspectives and different uh, uh, views on things so then we catch each other when we're making that mistake. But don't worry. El Sanda is not dogging anyone's religion. I am not. I apologize. I, again, if, if it's a religious reason, I understand where you're coming from, and I apologize to Lolo Jones for that as well. My bad. So... Did did uh did you have that belief at one point? I did. I also did have that belief. Yeah, at one point. I was like, wait a second. Osanda had that belief, and he's yeah. a weird dog in low low Jones. I'm sorry. And then I got. And the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show on the chant. I'm dead. And then <laughs> and then and then I got a girlfriend, and my perspective changed. <laughs> I'm gonna get you on the channel, low low, or the podcast. So, uh, because I, I Osanda was trying to dog. And so, maybe, uh, you can be his girlfriend. Um, I'm not interested in dating women that are that much older than me. Wow, I'm sorry, Lolo. We're really gonna get you on the channel. Oh, Sandra just insulted you again. She's forty. I'm twenty six. So age is but a number. Okay, yeah, sure. That's something a pedophile would say, but alright. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Sander, my girlfriend's older than me. Yeah, but not by 14 years. But it doesn't, I'm not a pedophile, that's the point I'm making. Anyway, so, any... I'm a pedophile, my girlfriend would be like 19. But she's 28. She would, okay, anyway, so, 
Our next investigative journalism topic is going to be LASIK. Let's talk about LASIK. What about it? About the negatives of the surgery. Fine, fine. You know what? We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. Maybe we'll do a different investigative journalism topic. <laughs> There's no, no, no negative. Not negative? There's a lot of negative consequences of LASIK. Scary cat. What? Ah? Uh, I'm the scary cat? Yeah. Alright, well, I can tell Ethan's attention span is uh, going away, especially considering the mic keeps falling. It's like a floppy. <laughs> I got distracted. I was pulling the, uh, I was pulling the thing and I got... <laughs> All right. So anyway, so uh, thank you for tuning into this week's episode of the Bouncing Potatoes. I am Osanda. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm swaggy. All right, and remember, guys. So this quote is brought to us by Royce Dupont. If you're not in a constant state of post nut clarity, you're in a constant state of pre nut delusion. Notice that I'm funny.